You may consider this next group of speakers somewhat unusual, if not to say strange. Uh, we, have, we have the creator of what is the world's first quantum computer, in person here from Burnaby, BC. We have the president of the super high-tech company that makes Canada's iconic Canada arm, but whose hobby it is to try and reconcile modern science with the Bible. And we have a filmmaker from Los Angeles who has stumbled on what appears to be evidence of life after death. And, and my thought in putting together this somewhat improbable combination of speakers was that out there where the theory of the very large and the very small connect, and out there where our 13.7 billion year old and expanding universe touches the void, you come upon mystery and the possibility of God. That was my thinking. So let's begin with Jordy. Jordy. Jordy, I... Yeah, I, I don't... In more recent years, I made a feature documentary called Jesus in India, Sundance Channel, exploring the mystery of the missing years of Christ, the 18 years unaccounted for in the New Testament. Many in India have the theory that he came to India from Judea in those years. I went to India to make the film. And I want to talk to you about the Life After Death Project. Not a film I chose to make, I say, it chose me because it was a series of odd events that started me in this direction of looking for evidence of life after death, something I hadn't given a lot of thought to, but something we all should. We're all gonna face it one day. And no, none of us knows for certain, but there is the question as to what evidence science can bring to the question. These are some of the fields of life after death study. It's a vast study. I mean, some would say you've got to include reincarnation, um, you know, for, for Catholics, there's heaven, hell, purgatory, limbo, there's four pieces of real estate. For the Hindus, there's millions of heavens. Um, for those with a scientific outlook, NDE, the near-death experience, EVP, electronic voice phenomenon, unusual voices appearing on tape that may be from deceased people, we don't know. ITC, instrumental transcommunication, which is the concept that matches part of what Jordy Rose talked about earlier, about the parallel universes, that our own instrumentality can become a device for unseen intelligences to communicate with us, bring us signals, messages, and are some of these from deceased people. ADC is this field of after-death communication. It goes back over a century. Um, the spiritualists, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the belief in mediums, most of this has been completely dismissed by science. Uh, there have been frauds and charlatans. It's not taken very seriously by most people today. However, I think now that science sort of threw out the baby with the bathwater, that there are real effects, and that some mediums do have a gift that has to be taken seriously, and it is being seriously researched, especially by Dr. Gary Schwartz, the University of Arizona in Tucson. I've worked with him. Some of the phenomena around ADC would include physical phenomena, actual things that could be measured by science that seem to be signals, messages, what we receive from mediums, and the field of synchronicities. So let's move on. This man, Forrest J. Ackerman, was my mentor. I met him uh, when I was 14 years old. He was massively influential in the field of science fiction. That was me at 14 over at the left, entering a movie contest from his magazine, which was loved by all of these people, Steven Spielberg, Stephen King, George Lucas, Peter Jackson. You see the list. This is the last photo that was taken of me with Fari before he passed away. This was done on Halloween. I asked him, he was a skeptic. He didn't believe in an afterlife. He was an atheist. I said, Fari, if, if you're wrong, he said, if I'm wrong and there is a way, tell you what, I'll drop you a line. 
Houdini once said that, and we don't think so. But with Fari, incredible things started to happen. This is the Placidus Crypt. Sci-fi was my high, it says. In fact, he coined the term sci-fi. And his wife, Wendy Nackerman, described as beloved wife of Mr. Science Fiction. Carl Jung, the Swiss psychiatrist, first gave us this concept of synchronicity where um, extraordinarily unrelated things come together in, in the form of a massive coincidence that seemed to have intense meaning in the eye of the beholder. For many people, the skeptics especially, these are nothing more than accidents and coincidences. There is another theory, um, and Gary Schwartz would certainly be one of the proponents, that, that, that there is meaning behind some of these events that happen to us, and that we should pay a lot of attention, and I have, particularly with regard to Fari. There were two Canadian filmmakers who came to his tribute. They had made a film about Fari, and um, that's uh, Mike McDonald rapping on his crypt. He said, hello, Fari, Uncle Fari, are you there? It's me, Mike. And Ian Paul Johnston of Toronto, who's with us today, the two of them came in for the tribute, attended by hundreds of people at the Egyptian Theater in Hollywood, December 7th, 2009. And when they got back from the crypt to the room they were staying in, Mike tried to blog an article onto Facebook and a CAPTCHA code come up. The squiggles and lines and random words and numbers you have to prove you're not a spammer. What came up was Ackerman 000, the man's name. He just rap, rap, rap on the crypt. Extraordinary. Synchronicity. But a moment later, you see this picture was on Ian's screen. Fari is a young boy, four and a half years old. The computer was down, screen's dark, not logged on to the internet. And as they discuss this, mess, this capture code, is he really dead? A voice of a child comes out of the other computer and says, oh my gosh, no way. Really? Everything you're hearing today is true and there's no exaggeration to it. It had no business speaking to him, said Ian. And particularly that, it, it is a, a, a modicon that you can find on YouTube. But again, the computer was not logged on to YouTube at the time, and it wasn't in the hard drive of the computer. Why did this happen? I went to Santa Fe afterwards, and that's where this extraordinary incident happened with ink that baffles and confounds me and baffles and confounds science. I have to go quickly. I ask you to see my DVDs. I've brought them. It's a two-DVD set. You'll get many answers that I can't give you here. But the short version is I had a document I knew there was nothing unusual about it. I was out of the room for a few minutes, and when I came back, moist ink was blacking out four of the words. It was still wet, and it was very specifically targeted to those four words. There was no one in the house but me. The doors were locked. I was alone, and yet this was done, which was obviously the result of someone's intention, the intention of some intelligence and the words were chosen, and they were a message, and it took me some time to figure it out. It reflected, I think, the humor of Mr. Ackerman. I think he was making mischief from another realm. And I'm glad that Geordie Rose preceded me in this talk, and he talked about trillions of parallel universes, and it makes my job much easier, <laughs> because I'm asking you to believe these extraordinary things, they all happened. I took it to the chairman of the chemistry department of Indiana University. He started with gas chromatography, he sent me to this man, John Allison, College of New Jersey. He researched the ink for three years. The bottom line, and you'll hear their testimony in the DVD set, science cannot explain this ink blot, and we cannot reproduce it. We have tried everything. These men are experts in inks and paints and solvents. It's like it's the year 1400. Everybody thinks the world is flat, but some people observe, no, the hulls of ships, they, they disappear before the sails and they can't explain it. And maybe it's the ship falling off the end of the flat earth, but there may be a few people that don't think so, that think the world is round. I think the world is round and that all of this has meaning and it's telling us something and that there are signals coming from my late mentor. The last story, very quickly, before I came to Toronto, someone found 
by accident this that Fari signed uh, probably 20 years ago. Warmest wishes winner, Paul from Fari. I was the winner in his contest decades ago. If this was for another Paul, it was never given to him. It was found right before I came here. It was delivered to me as a, as a gift. This is the Life After Death Project. Moses, thank you so much for having me.